It's Thursday night, and it's time to unwrap Las Vegas right here on BANR. That's VegasAllNetRadio.com, which means it's time for Vegas Unwrap. The phone lines are open at 702-483-4444. Now, without further ado, here are your hosts, Aaron Phillips and Ricky Cash. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Vegas Unwrapped Internet Radio. This is Aaron Phillips alongside my partner, Ricky Cash, coming to you live from the studios of Vegas All Net Radio in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. We want to welcome you to our newest edition and latest edition of our show. We've got a lot going on tonight. So, Mr. Cash, how are you, sir? Doing well. Thank you very much. You know, this is interesting. We had a very, for, for Vegas, we had a very cool August. One of the coolest Augusts in, I don't know, 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. We've had nothing but 100 plus degrees the first four days of, of September. September. <laughs> Isn't that special? That's right. Well, it's still not pool days, though, unfortunately. I think the water's cooling off. I got in there the other day. Yeah, but you didn't stay in very long from what you told me. No, no. The icicle started <laughs> and I And I asked the guy when he's going to heat it. Right. He told me any day now. For only a month, though. Any day. Yeah, that he, could be February. Well, he was waiting for the for the you know, okay from the association. The association. Gotcha. And we know about them. Yes, we do. We want to thank you for listening in tonight. Of course, our studio line is seven zero two four eight three forty four forty four. You can also Skype us at Vegas All Net Radio. And of course, joining us in studio is JPEG behind the camera. We'll hear more from JPEG later on. Unfortunately, as hey now, <laughs> no, come he, on. He'll make you look bad in the camera. You know that. Hey, that's all right. Um, kicking off a new segment that we call Doing It. With with style, and um, we will be seeing and hearing more about that in a little bit. Um I don't know if you have it on camera, if you have the view, but of course, Bobcat is not with us tonight. Bobcat is home uh, recuperating. He fell a little ill yesterday. Yes, he did. And uh, we'll be... Uh, we'll I, think, be I think he found out what we were going to do tonight. He got, <laughs> he got sick. I told him yesterday, when I spoke, it's like, you know what? It's like, uh, if you really don't want to work the show tomorrow night, you can just say, I need the night off or something. Jeez. But uh, no, he's, he's home and uh, taking care of himself for the next couple of days, and we'll be back with us next Thursday. So if you're listening, which I hope you are, Bobcat, you know, we'd love you we miss you and uh, just get better we'll see you back in studio next week and unfortunately mrs bobcat's probably gonna have one heck of a job keeping him tied down <laughs> until he comes back in studio next week well you know him he's he's constantly moving and you know you know what he'll get himself lost on facebook yep and uh you know we should see some interesting quotes from him uh you know what we may have a couple bobcatisms while when he comes back maybe you know, no cashisms maybe some bobcatisms <laughs> i've had enough cashism <laughs> <laughs> uh, we haven't. All right, joining us in our first hour, uh, where are we going to be on Saturday, Mr. Cash? We are going to be at the Harley Davidson on Route Rainbow. Route <laughs> Rainbow. Uh, you didn't take your five hour energy, did you? No. Truth be told, folks, I picked him up at 6 15. He rolled out of his nap at 6 14 30. Um, if <laughs> I'll tell you, if, if Ted didn't wake me up. It would have been a problem. I, you would have had to come in and drag me out. I would have left your ass I, at home, I'm, and you would have just called in. Great. Just, <laughs> so I'll remember that next time you find yourself in rehab. Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, it's a year ago. Yeah, I know. It's a oh. year ago that we messed up that September show. No, <laughs> actually, it was a year that you 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 were in the hospital for yeah. about uh, until for, September thirteenth, and then you went to the rehab. Well, I was in it was in the hospital from August twenty eighth till whatever that Saturday was twenty eighth, twenty ninth, like September first. It was right. Labor Day weekend, and then I was in rehab from that Saturday till the thirteenth of September. You know what I liked about going to rehab with, at your place last year? The chocolate ice cream, the free ice cream, the free ice cream we were getting. <laughs> it was good, yeah, man. We, I was not. On really any diet, I mean, I was on a dietary restriction, but not not bland stuff. And they always had ice cream available for dessert. Yeah, so. these little Dixie cups. Yeah, that, the little that black that and white, the chocolate and vanilla cups that you only get in hospitals. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And so I want to thank them for taking good care of us. Anyway, so where are we going to be Saturday? We're going to be on <laughs> Rainbow again? <laughs> with Rainbow and Sahara. It's the Harley Davidson store. We're going to be there for on a flight of Southern Nevada. Right. Our second visit in the last six months. Right. And we will be doing a live broadcast of some sort 
Yes, yeah. either on Google Plus or we're just going to record some interviews and put them on our YouTube channel. But we will be there from 8 to 10. Very nice. And uh, we'll do some interviews. Unfortunately, JPEG won't be able to join us because he has another commitment. Right. So we'll uh, figure out what we'll do on Saturday. But the weather's supposed to be nice because Sunday and Monday they are calling for a small chance of rain. Small. They're talking about two inches now, in the valley. Yesterday they only showed a like, 20% chance. Now they're talking that it's... Two inches between Monday and Tuesday. Oh, and so they moved it out. Okay. Well, at least which would be nice. I yeah. mean, this this town. I'm ready could, for rain and they cold. They could use the soaking. Yes. Right. I'm j- I'm just ready for it to uh, to cool off now. Now that s- swimming season's just about over, we got football that started tonight. You know, baseball's winding down. I'm ready for the temperatures to drop about 30 degrees. Yeah, me too. Yeah. You know. Kind just, of open the windows. Just believe it there, you know. Don't, right. don't drop into the 30s and 40s. Exactly, exactly. So Belinda Morse, she's the executive director of Honor Flight, will be joining us here sometime in this first hour. And then, as I mentioned earlier, as we wrap up the first hour, JPEG will be with us with the first installment, the first ever on-air installment, right? That's what we said during the, in the green room. Doing it in styles, uh, doing it with styles. And um, he's got a website by the same name. He's got Facebook page. We'll talk about all of that. When he comes on, did he pe- did he give you the check? It hasn't cleared yet, but I trust him. <laughs> yeah. So, and then in the second hour, you know, there's something about a big announcement on the schedule mm. with some president or something that's that's in town from New York or something. So that'll be coming up in the. I can hardly wait to hear what that's about. Well, you know, you know how much I love surprises. Yeah, well, you know, trying to keep it from you is has been a very very difficult matter in the past week. But uh, hey, look. So you know what it's about? I have a fairly decent idea. That scares me more than anything else. I thought it might. <laughs> that scares me more than anything else, folks. So you got some shout-outs? Celebrity birthdays, dates, and history, and weird news, of course. Uh, who's online? Let's see. I see Scott Hogue is out there tonight. Scotty, good to hear. see that you're out there. Our partner from Raw Power Sports, Rich Perez, I see, is out in the uh, listening land out there. Uh, our phone number is 702-483-4444. So give us a call. Call in. You'll get show tickets. Yeah, we still have. Plenty of tickets to the Beatles at Planet Hollywood. Mark Savard, um, he is the comedy hypnosis. And, of course, the mentalist with Jerry McCambridge. So, um, yeah, by all means, man. Uh, we got some tickets to give away. Be the first caller. We'll give you a choice of two tickets. Uh, present company and studio not included. Sorry. Nor Sorry, any of their back. relatives. Nor of their relatives, friends, cousins, or acquaintances. distant relatives or steps step whatever children anyway nobody in other words nobody they know nobody they know that's <laughs> right exactly um so that's it so what do you got going on any empire stories uh points of the week shout okay, out just just the the travel today you know i started at kyle canyon i went all the way up to the top of the mountain and missed the missed the street so i had to come back <laughs> down you know where the other resort is about three quarters of the yep. way up well there's a little condo behind there so that was my first appointment. Second appointment, closer to home. But the third one, you can't get further east, man. <laughs> I swear. Desert Inn runs up to Hollywood. I, I was so far out there, I was breathing heavy. By the way, you know what's interesting? <laughs> well, for you, just getting out of bed from what I heard is you, you breathe heavy. So Tell me about it. Do you know what's interesting? You know, we talk about Mile High Stadium, uh-huh. 5,000 278 feet or whatever right. it is I didn't realize that as you go up the mountain mm-hmm. to towards the top you get close to 8,000 feet up there on Mount Charles really yeah I know because and believe it or not you step out you take a deep breath and there is a definite difference in your air there is none. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. There is none. Wise ass <laughs> over there. So that was my day, you know. Oh, man. And, and of course, late late afternoon naps. Yeah, absolutely. Those are. I was listening to Cal, Cal, Colin Cowherd this morning, and he was talking about addictions, and he said he wondered if he was getting addicted to naps. Because he made, he called this summer the summer of Colin, because he was gonna. They didn't go anywhere on vacation. It was like a stogie every day. It was out on the back porch, sipping a little cognac or whatever, and naps every day. He was committed to doing naps. So I couldn't help but laugh when I heard him talk about the commitment to, to naps. And he's forty years old. Well, no, uh, yeah, like he is. Uh, yeah, he's in his mid forties. So, right. well, I just got started late, I guess. That was special. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so so it was pretty interesting. So so you were all over town. So your scheduler needs a map in front of them when they schedule your appointments no question about it. well my my 
sales manager Jason's on vacation this week. Oh, so all this is all this is coming down from the corporate office. Gotcha. So they don't know that I don't like to go left, right, left. They right. don't know what he knows. You're right, exactly. <laughs> By the way, he, I think I play him on our uh, Raw Power Sports Fantasy League uh, this weekend. Who are you playing? Do you? Know? I, I believe I'm going up against. Um, yeah, I saw the schedule, and I can, Radar is going up against Mr. Perez this weekend. Oh, that's going to be a blast. Because and she's got Aaron Rodgers. And he's throwing touchdowns after touchdowns. Well, the current maybe. score is 17-10 to 10 at halftime, uh, Seattle. So um, he did not throw a touchdown in the first half. They, there was a, um, what's his name, Kuhn scored, the, scored it on the ground for Green All right. Bay. All so right. it's 17-10 Seattle, Green Bay at halftime. Do you have any players in there tonight? I no, don't. I don't. I don't either. I don't. I start the weekend. Okay. Sunday. Oh, my guys. I, I, here's a t- I, I, want, I want feedback on this. My two quarterbacks in my fantasy league. You ready? My starting quarterback I have penned in right now is Peyton Manning. My backup is Andrew Luck. <laughs> who should I start? Depends on who they're playing. <laughs> well, it happens to be the Colts and, and, and Broncos are opening up together this week. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going against each other this week. So that's my, t- that's my starting. And that's my quarterback. And, and that, is a, that is a dilemma. I know. No dilemma. Peyton. Peyton. Yeah, that's why that's, I'm going to leave. I'm not only going to touch my opening day lineup. So. Yeah, I could have taken Russell Wilson because he's my backup. Yeah, well, you would have missed a touchdown already because he did throw for a touchdown, as we heard coming into the studio. But I do have Drew Brees. <laughs> well, that's not bad either. So not, I, and I have Jimmy Graham. Show. Yeah. So I, Drew Brees should throw a lot to Jimmy Graham, and we'll be okay. Yeah, we'll be fine. <laughs> so, so fantasy football has started. Uh, how about you want to do some scores? I can give some Major League Baseball scores. Well, let Bob. me do a quick shout. out Oh yes, go ahead. Let me no just just a quick shout out to my buddy Lois. She's uh, I talked to her early this morning, and uh, you know she's she's doing really well. She is. She went to the doctor. Listen to this, Aaron. Mm-hmm. She's got a totally clean bill of health. She no more feet no problems, more, broken nothing, ankles, nothing, toes. Nothing. And she was so excited about it. I said, great. Can you pass some of that off to <laughs> me? But, uh, you know, she she's my... She's my positive inspiration. Whenever I get in the dumps, I call her, and she's always got a good, good, kind word. And she always, she says, "I want to see you smile before I hang up." So, so today I made a face, and she said, "That's not good enough." I don't know how she. Saw I was going to say, "How did she?" Know? I don't know. I don't know. But that, and then of course when she said, "That's not good enough," I smiled, and she said, "That's okay." Jeez. Unbelievable. I, I wonder, sure, you weren't talking to Jamie. I, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe they have a connection that I don't know about. So. Yeah. Lois, thank you for being you and love you dearly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's impressive. I'm serious. That's impressive. All right. Can you uh, bring my pot up here? Because we'll just kick off some ESPN music. Thank you. Give you some scores and highlights from the week. Uh, I believe you're Bob Kitt. Hello, everybody. This is Bobcat from the Vegas Rap Sports Desk. Let's start off with Major League Baseball. I can't do a NASCAR report because I don't know jack about NASCAR. Yeah, you don't. So, Bobcat, if you happen, or or Mrs. Bobcat, if you happen to be listening and you're late, call call in for a NASCAR report. Give us a NASCAR report. All right. Baseball scores. I already touched on the NFL. Cleveland and Detroit tied at four, top of the eighth inning. Baltimore, Cincinnati. Baltimore's up 9 7 over Cincy. My Yankees are down to the Red Sox 4 3, going into the top of the ninth. Seattle and Texas, 9 to one, Seattle is, take, is taking it to Texas. Of course, everybody's been taking it to Texas this year. <laughs> St. Louis three, uh, Milwaukee two. Milwaukee, <laughs> talk about who's hot, who's not. Yeah, you're right. Minnesota and the Angels are tied at four. Arizona four nothing over the Padres. A couple of finals here in the ranks. Uh, Toronto beat Tampa Bay one nothing, and that is it. Everything else is later on or tomorrow. So big weekend in sports. Yeah, college, absolutely. College football, college football really kicks off this weekend with uh, you know. Just about everybody in his sister playing. Yeah, it's the, the full season opens up. Yeah. Um, let's see if we can. I may have some actual. Let's see if I have there a is schedule. A, there is a score too tonight. Yes, there is Arizona yes. at uh, who's UTSA University uh, Texas San Antonio, San Antonio who who went into Houston last week as a ten and a half point underdog and beat the crap out of. Well, them. Arizona's up twenty to 16, 12 yeah. 20 to go in the third. There you go. So, and that's the same Arizona team that crushed our Rebels. Yeah, right. But the Rebels are going to come back strong this Saturday night against uh, Northern Colorado. Well, let's hope so. We're trying to get some passes. You know that, don't I, you? Well, that's something Mr. Perez is working on. Well, Mr. Perez, if you're listening out there, where are our passes? They're How about in, that? They're incomplete. 
How <laughs> get that incomplete? Yeah, okay. we got it. Thank you. Not All that, right, not that good. What we're gonna do is take a break, Jeez. and hopefully Belinda's here in the green room waiting to come on with us. You're listening to Vegas and Rap with Aaron Phillips, Ricky Cash, JPEG behind the camera, and Randy filling in for Bobcat tonight on the board. Don't we, didn't we once call him Red? No, I don't think so. We should. Did we, come? we didn't call you Red, did we? Well, he is now. He's now officially Red. Maybe he doesn't like that. Too bad. What? Take. <laughs> I, yeah, he's taking it. Oh, he's taking it. He's All right. red. Big, red, big, big red. Big red on big the board. Red. I like All that right. better. Big red on the board. Vegas and Rap. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Vegas Unwrapped. Aaron Phillips, Ricky Cash, JPEG behind the camera. Big Red on the board tonight filling in for Bob Cat, who's home, taking a couple of days off. And as always, Mr. Cash during a commercial break. What happens around here? We get Chinese fire drills. We do. People well, come in and out of the studio, right? And we, and we, we had one chair short. Well, that's all right. He, that's all right. We'll, we'll manage. Well, we're sitting. I shouldn't speak for him. <laughs> <laughs> Belinda Morris. From Honor Flight, Southern Nevada, Executive Director, and we're just we just started calling you the chef last year. There you go. So <clears throat> Yeah, let's let's give everybody his real name. Go ahead. His name is Brian McGill and he's uh, on our board of directors. Absolutely. And he's our go to guy for pancakes. He's a weekend. hell of a pancake guy. So what was it? About a thousand pancakes were made last year, some ridiculous number? Yeah, it was, it was a little over a thousand. There was a lot there. <laughs> and for, and it wasn't like five dollars a pancake. He was giving pancakes to as many people as many as they wanted to eat, basically, right? I think the funniest picture I took was the mixer was using one of those Home Depot five-gallon drums with a drill bit with whatever was on the bottom to mix the batter. It was funny. Yeah, it was, it was, it was the, a, the towel mixer. Yeah, that yeah. was funny. That was a was great funny. picture. Yeah, we yeah. went through 18 bags of batter and then one 40-pound bag of batter. Oh, my gosh. So we went through a lot of batter. That's a lot of pancakes, but they were excellent, though. You're, you're planning on repeating that again? Uh, we're hoping to double it. Wow. Double it. My forearm, my one forearm can handle it. <laughs> He's been working out I, since. I've been doing this. We, now <laughs> figure, uh, so. we will be bringing a backup drill. There you yes. go. Oh, there you go. Well, welcome. Good to see you guys again. Nice Thanks to for see having us. Yeah. Appreciate it. We ran into each other at the Orleans uh, Soup. The Senior Spotlight Spectacular what was it last week already. I don't know. I'm losing yeah. sight of dates. It was, it was maybe 10 days Two ago. Two weeks ago. All right, I'm know, losing. I'm losing track of days. I don't know. There were so many people there, and it was it was funny the running. The twenty third. Yeah, funny running into her again. Absolutely, had a yeah. table back there. It was nice to see him. We were giving out flyers for the pancake breakfast at our table, like it was going out of stock. Really, I'm telling you, we gave away more flyers and Vegas unwrapped pens than, <laughs> than you can imagine. And it, what was funny about it is, by by mid morning, by eleven thirty, twelve o'clock, right? I had to start telling the people. Just one, please. Oh, really? Yeah, they they were grabbing handfuls. It was like they never saw a pen before. And it's I, not, I mean, it's a nice pen, but it says Vegas on wrap. Yeah, but still, you know. It's a pen. They may not even talk to you, but they'll come up they'll and get whatever you got <laughs> exactly. on your table. <laughs> exactly. Too bad. Next year, we got to do candy. We'll save the pens next year. Not chocolate, though. And if, no, no, not the, There's enough chocolate there to start a diabetic convention. You're not kidding. It was amazing. All right, guys, let's talk about the organization, Honor Flight of Southern Nevada, or Nevada. Because I'm, I'm not being politically correct when I say Nevada. Um, great organization. Why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about it, what your goals are, what your mission is? Our mission is to uh, escort World War II veterans to Washington, D.C. to see the memorials uh, that have been put up uh, to recognize the sacrifices they had made so that we can be free today. Absolutely. So we are an all volunteer organization. Uh, everything we raise goes to getting this operation up and running. And our pancake breakfast is our big fundraiser that we do. We like to invite the community out. So Okay. Cool. Now, um, talk about the flights themselves. You, you mentioned it's for those who have never been there before, but let's talk right. about what goes into the flights, the, the prep. How are the how are these uh, veterans selected to go or who's allowed to go, et cetera? Talk about that a okay. little bit. Okay. We have applications that they can either get online at our website or um, many of the veterans at that age don't have computers. So we do get a lot of phone calls asking us just to mail it to them. So we mail them. They apply. Our priority is World War two veterans at this point we don't know if we'll get to any any other of the uh, wars 
So once they apply, we collect a list, and usually about 45, 60 days before the flight, we start interviewing them, making sure that we can handle whatever their needs are for the flight. So we have a team that gets together and goes out, and this time we did face-to-face -face interviews so we could get a good look at, you know, because mm -hmm. sometimes they don't tell us they really need a wheelchair. Right. And they really need a wheelchair. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, like our last flight, they didn't need a wheelchair, and then we found out we needed more wheelchairs. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Which was, you know, that's why we, we did what we did this yeah. time. You know, it's interesting, folks. Uh, do the math. World War II, 1941 to 1945. Cash covered it. That's why he knows the dates. And this is already 2014, so you know how old these veterans are, and obviously well into their 80s. Yes. Many of them, you know, this is their last shot at doing something like this. Yes. And, and it's, I'll tell you what, we've been moved before by situations that Aaron and I have been involved with, with Vegas Unwrapped over the past five and a half years, but I can tell you there is nothing that was more moving than what we saw six months ago. And for us to be able to do this again, trust me, it's our absolute honor and privilege, pleasure. Well, we're so glad that you're going to be there. I think our youngest on this flight is uh, 80 six and we had one that was 96 but he did call me yesterday and he had to back out of this yeah he, he had a date hot date he <laughs> well he got sick so oh, he damn. said don't but don't he said leave me on the list for the next flight so yeah. hopefully I mean, we, he'll we be able to make it yeah some of these guys i mean you wouldn't believe the shape that they're in you know and and we and and the smarts they're so quick we had one guy uh last flight because we had a little bus problems um he to calm everyone down he went out there started singing and playing the piano <laughs> at 96 <laughs> years old god bless him i mean this guy was awesome he's singing and everyone's just like it just it, <laughs> oh it was it was awesome it was the greatest, now, the greatest thing you guys went back in April, if yes. I'm not mistaken, and that was, of course, during the unfortunate time that our government was shut down. Well, that was that was October of last year. Oh, oh, that was, oh that's yeah. right. That was October yes. of last year. How, talk about that, because I found it quite interesting to, to learn of some of the experiences about what was open, what wasn't open, what you guys were able to get into. Well, we had quite the panic going on because, um, you know, when they they decided that they needed to shut down the national parks out of all the things that needed to be shut it, shut down. Um, and we have a great system at Honor Flight Network, and they began lobbying with our with congressmen all over the U.S., and we were able to get a very specific permit. We had to do it in advance to get a permit to be there on at the World War II Memorial. But we couldn't get permits for any of the other ones. So basically, we were were able to go through the barricade um, that weekend, but we were not able to get we had to go through the barricades for the Vietnam and the Korean Memorial. And the real interesting one was Iwo Jima. They, you know, it's an open park, there's a road. Well, they blocked the road off. Jeez. They blocked the road off, they put some big water full barriers in mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. Well, Brian here with one of our other team members got out of the bus and they knocked the barriers over emptied right. the water out all right yeah. <laughs> good yeah, job cool. emptied the water out <laughs> we drove through the bus our guys were just cheering good. they were just so excited to be yeah. able to get on and there. then and then our, the other member she was grabbing the tape and then we all grabbed some tape and, and we gave it to those guys and they thought it was the coolest thing because they see this on TV and here we're pushing this barrier down. I think I needed a massage like for two weeks. <laughs> those things were heavy, let, but it was fun. <laughs> let, let me ask you guys, Chris, you know, obviously before I talked about age and these guys are all in their late 80s. Well, the Korean War followed shortly after World War II, 1950, 1953. Is that the future for On a Flight of America? Will that be the next set of vets that you want to bring out there to show them the, what obviously they deserve, uh, as well as the World War II ones? Well, the On a Flight was technically started just for World War II memorials I, because yeah, right. their memorial wasn't finished in 2004, well after many of these veterans were already in their 80s. Um, however, I do know that some of the other hubs, the honor flight hubs across the nation,
Administration are working towards and taking some of the Korean veterans and even a few Vietnam veterans are able to go. Yeah, it yeah. really depends on what their wait list is like and how you know. I imagine. How many I, takes yeah, I imagine their their physical well being. I mean, like you said, if somebody is you know terminal, you know, terminal, then they, that, you know, that, they that might be something yeah. that they would want to see. But, but we really want to in our honor flight. Not saying that that's not going to happen, but we really want to make sure that every World War II veteran that lives anywhere around here gets over to D.C. Do you have a number? So we can do do this you have thing. a number? I mean, you know, because this this city keeps statistics on everything. Do you have a number of how many World War II vets live in and around the you know what we like to call the the valley? Well, I contacted the Veterans Administration, and the only data they could really give me were the number of World War II veterans in Nevada, and there are 16,000 at the last census. And you, the number that are passing away every day is very high nationwide, sure. up to 800, 900 a day nationwide. So we're figuring about now, we've got at least 10,000 in Nevada, and we expect that most of those are in the southern Nevada it's area. It's got to be at least two-thirds. Right? Yeah, so we cover from Tonopah over to Ely. Really? Uh, Pahrump, uh, Boulder City, Laughlin, Mesquite, really all of southern Nevada that we can get that can make it here. Um, we do have one this time coming from from Laughlin. We have two coming from, from Mesquite this flight. Nice. So we do try to get them. And actually we have a Korean War veteran going on this flight because his wife is a World War II veteran. And holy, he holy watches sh- out for shmoles. her. <laughs> yeah. Really? So we felt that, I was, yeah. that was a reason to let him go is so that he could go with his wife. Tremendous. So Now you also mentioned to us last time that you have some partners ships with certain places uh for example the the flights southwest you still partnering with them uh southwest actually partners or helps honor flights all over the u.s yeah. they are an incredible asset to have on board but yes they still help us out um they help us make sure things run smoothly at the airport mccarran has a team of people that i meet with prior to the flight I come in with a checklist, and they say, yes, 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 maybe, yes, 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 but most of it's all, you know, go. It's basically a charter flight then, right? Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) And then... um, QSI, which is a business here in town, and we have a board member that's, that uh, owns that business, he lets us basically run our show out of his office. We have our meetings there, our mail goes there, they check everything for us, so they always help us as well. Um, the American Legions here in town, we have several that are very supportive, that um, not only do they donate, they make sure their veterans are signed up, and um, like for our tables and chairs, they make sure we have enough chairs for our pancake breakfast. Wow. So, we get a lot of support. Excellent. You know what we're going to stop right there for right now? We're going to step aside for a quick break. break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about the event on Saturday, entertainment, whatever else you got going on, and how people can find out more about Saturday's Pancake Breakfast. Sounds good? You're listening to Vegas Unwrapped here on VegasAllNetRadio.com. Aaron Phillips, Ricky Cash, JPEG behind the camera, Big Red on the board, and of course, Belinda and Brian here in studio from Honor Flight of Southern Nevada. More info with them coming up about the Pancake Fundraiser right after this. All right, well, Welcome back to Vegas Unwrapped. We're just chatting here, and we gave uh, Belinda and Brian a little, well, Mr. Cash did a little sneak, and still keeping it away from me about what the big announcement is next hour, so good luck with that. (laughs) Good luck with that. All right, we're sitting here with Brian McGill and Belinda Morse uh, from Honor Flight of Southern Nevada, and or Nevada, I keep saying Nevada, it's my New Jersey accent. Uh, This Saturday from 7 to 11 a.m. at the Red Rock Harley-Davidson on Rainbow and Sahara, uh, come out five dollars for pancakes and probably the best pancakes you'll ever have because of the cause in terms of supporting these World War II veterans who are going back to Washington DC for the first time ever to see the war memorials and and we're delighted to be part of that so let's talk about Saturday what's going on you have some entertainment lined up you have some people running around besides Phillips and cash what's happening Saturday well the calls are coming in people want to attend Um, we've been told that a uh, barber shop quartets going to show up Mm -hmm. and um, we've had um, some public officials say they'd like to drop by and anything for photo ops for them yeah (laughs) yeah. is it it an election year (laughs) i know we can't help it i'm just like 
Just don't hand them the microphone. <laughs> yeah, really. She I still owes us. Here we go. And the, actually, the invite is on Facebook, Pancake Breakfast Fundraiser. I'm going to repost it to the Vegas and Rat fan page. So if you'd like some more information and really the details for Saturday, I mean, it'll be right there on our fan page. I think I missed the details that it was $5, and it's from 7 to 11. It's open to the public. You do not have to make a reservation. You can buy your tickets yeah, Cedar, there. Cedar Mater D as you pull in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you have a little booth, right, where they go and they pay the $5. Yes. And then they get a ticket, right? No. They'll, they'll get their hands stamped okay. and let them know. Because some people did buy tickets in advance, and some others just were going to come by and will stamp their hand. And then they'll come in and have a seat. We actually have um, some students and some volunteers that will come out and serve them. So, Good. so, we'll we'll awesome. so Phillips, don't so forget to get your hand stamped. Yeah, exactly. Because, exactly. you know, pancakes are tough to come by. And the place. sausage, too. Don't forget oh, the yeah, sausage. 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 That's right. There'll the be sausage. juice and coffee. Yep, juice and coffee. And well, you, when we got there last time, it was a little bit nippy in the morning, but now this one is going to be. I'm not expecting all the no way. nippy. I'm worried about <laughs> and the I, heat. And I, stand, and I stand by the grill, so I'm nice and yeah, toasty. Yeah, you are so. toasty for sure. I'm worried about it getting too warm for some of the veterans. We do invite veterans from our last flight and veterans from our upcoming flight, and we'll have a two table set aside for World War II veterans. And so we really invite the public to come out and meet these guys yeah, and, and listen see them to and their stories. To them. Well, it's I awesome. think I think when we were doing our little interview stuff we had a couple of them come over and oh they were a riot they were just so funny and so thankful for the they opportunity are. to go i mean you know this is a big deal to them it is um this time i was interviewing one guy and basically what we tried to do was interview him make sure that we could take them because if their health is too bad um and they can't provide a guardian then we really can't take them because right, right. we we're not medical staff um, so we have a uh, I had a question yeah. and, and, and I know that everything I've heard that it, this is just for the veterans and not their spouses or but do you have veterans that need some assistance that can take somebody along can you provide for that we of actually they've got some they've got a caregiver they act, their caregiver does have to pay for themselves to go. Yes. All guardians pay. We actually have a wait list of guardians from the community that want to go oh, awesome. and that are paying their they way to go. Mm -hmm. They pay their own way. Tremendous. Um, some of them that have more health issues, then we do want them to provide a family member or a caregiver. Just uh, someone younger that actually provides can provide the care and push the wheelchairs. But most of them that need just need wheelchairs or just have a little bit of issues, then our guardians take care of that. But anything heavier than that, then we do ask that family members. Um, again, we do get some pushback about not letting spouses go. But if you think about it, we've got 35 men and women over the age of 87. We've got enough to worry about without adding yeah. more, and sometimes their health isn't as, yeah, as and good. And then the stress that goes along with it, too. Yeah. So sure, And I mean, it's a veteran event. It's not a it, family vacation. It's very... And it's for them. I mean, it's, it's for the World War II vets. We want them to, to not have to worry about anything that's going on on the side. We want them to, to just fully take everything in that they're being given, you know, and by us saying thank you, you know, for, for what they've done for all of us. When is the actual flight this time? It's October 3rd, 4th, and 5th, and we actually will have a um, some family members, like grandsons, are going, taking going with their uh, grandfathers. I'll tell so. you what, that's already, I'm already getting choked up here. It's pretty awesome. So that's, that's pretty yeah. cool stuff. And one of the guys we interviewed this time, when I told him, I was just trying to interview him, and he started to tear up, and he said, do I get to go? And I, when I saw that, I couldn't say anything but yes. Yes, you're. Yes, you're going. You're going. And well, he was just well, so choked up. Well, if you get the tears up. now, wait till they come back. Oh, I know. That's yeah, amazing. We, we also had one that came to our pancake breakfast in October. I'm sorry, in April, and he didn't want to go. He didn't want to go. He didn't want to go. I told him you'll be with me. I'm going to be right there with you, right here. Whatever you need. He gets a hold of Belinda, sends in an application. He's going. 
and the guy is the neatest guy you ever seen in, in the world. So his wife says, how come you don't bring wives? And I says, because this is for him. She goes, good, I want to get rid of him and go shopping anyways. <laughs> wow. Now, what, what I heard here now is three days. Well, it doesn't take a day to fly there and fly back. So you also take care of them in Washington. Talk a little bit about where they stay and what's a, what else is provided right. for them. Um, we fly, we leave out uh, early Friday morning. Um, we try to get straight to the hotel. Um, we stay in Baltimore because it's the only direct flight from here on right. Southwest. Yes, it is. I know um, that well. So we go into BWI and we stay at a hotel there. We have a banquet set up for them that night with some surprises for them at the banquet. And then Saturday morning, we leave the hotel at 8 o'clock. And it's, I think we have seven memorials on our on our list to try to make it to and uh, I didn't I didn't realize there were that many memorials there. Oh, yeah. Can you can you well, expand upon that? We spend most of our morning, the first hour or so at the World War II Memorial and then we go to Iwo Jima. Then we'll go to Arlington Cemetery because we have to a lot of our prep time requires us to schedule that visit I have to schedule it at least six, eight months in advance. That's sure. why the and that's dates one of have our, to be. And that's one of our longest stops. Yeah. You know, so because we, there's so much there. They have a, Arlington sets a special place out for honor flights. So they get to see the changing of the guards. And we were really lucky this time. We we're actually going to be able to do the reef laying at the Tomb of the, the, Unknown, Tomb so. of the Unknown. So this is the first time we've been able to get that in on the schedule uh, far enough. I had to make the reservation December of last year. Do they go to the for this October? The, the Kennedys, both resting spots there as well. They have. They don't have enough time really right. to go right. over that. Mm. And then we go after uh, Arlington. We will go to the Vietnam Memorial and the Korean Memorial, and then we go to the Navy Memorial because it's really the only place where you can buy souvenirs. Yeah, souvenirs. Oh wow! Yeah. I, see, this is all brand new to me. And, and, I mean, and I only knew a few of these. I had no clue that there was a Navy Memorial. There's an Air Force Memorial as well, but I don't think we have any on this flight, we so just, we're not going to go yeah, to the right. Air Force Makes Memorial. Sense. Usually we'll just drive through there most of the time. We drive years. through. It's such a long day, and it, some it of them don't want to get off the must, bus. It must be tough for them, too. We, as you know, as much as they want to be there, it's got to be physically a taxing. After the Korean and the, the Vietnam, that's when they start to slow down a little bit, and then they pick up a little bit as we're getting back to the hotel. They get some more food in their system. and Yeah, we don't make know. them get off the bus. If yeah. they, except for okay. World War II, we make them get off the bus. Yes. That's why they're there. And we make them get off the bus at Arlington yeah. um, because this the buses can't stay with us at Arlington so we make them get, since we're responsible, and then they, they have to get off. They fly back on Sunday then? <laughs> yeah, we yes. come back Sunday and I would like to invite everyone to be at the airport at 3 o'clock on uh, October 4th, 5th, October 5th, to welcome them. Go to the second yeah. floor right above baggage claim and um, McCarran really works with us so that we don't actually go to baggage claim. We come through the top and there will be um, an area cordoned off for our guys and we have signs and we'll ha just welcoming them home. That's incredible. Yeah. Real, real quickly, you, you mentioned obviously that Honor Flight is a strictly volunteer organization. Yes, sir. If someone wants information about becoming a volunteer for the organization, what can they do? Um, they can apply. There's an application on our website, okay. honorflightsouthernnevada.org. There's a guardian application, a veteran application, and a volunteer application. They can fax it, email, or snail mail. There you go. So everybody can get involved. A absolutely. And I love the idea of going to the airport and welcoming them home. That's a big event. Absolutely. They, they are overwhelmed. If you want to see some tears and eyes, that's where you're going to see. I was going to say, as soon as, soon as we get on. Mine too. <laughs> yeah, as soon as we get on the plane, that's where the tears really start. Cause sure. Belinda and I will do mail call. Right. For all of our vets. And. That's when it starts. Yeah. And we'll, that's, we'll, that's, try, we'll try. We'll try to that's. circle that on our calendar because that would be a touching conclusion to what we're mm -hmm. doing this Saturday. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Good news is, is that that'll be the day after Yom Kippur ends, so we should be available. Hey, that's good. Yeah. So, that's <laughs> guys, good. thank you so much for thank coming you for in. Having thank us. you. We're looking sure. forward to Saturday. We'll be out there, bright and ready to go, between eight and ten, doing our thing. And is it true you're not eating dinner uh, uh, I've Friday night? I've already stopped eating. <laughs> you're already. Uh, already. I'm so, saving so up for them pancakes. So you're gonna do, you're gonna do a Yom Kip a fast Absolutely. ahead of time Absolutely. so that we can eat plenty on Saturday. For Brian's pancakes, I'll wait two days. 
Wow, those sausages weren't too I bad either. You no, know. they weren't. They, they weren't. Nice. Thank you, guys. We'll see you then. Thanks so much Thanks. for having we us. We'll it. see you on Auto Saturday. Auto Flight of Southern Nevada. Check them out online. Great organization. When we come back on the other side, JPEG in front of the camera, doing it in styles. Coming up on the other side of the break, a debut for Mr. John. You're listening to Vegas Unwrapped here on Vegas All Net Radio. We will be right back. All right, welcome back. I'm just up, updating our fan page that uh, Doing It With Styles is coming up here. Um, there we go. And uh, we're going to give the man the opportunity to step in front of the camera because everybody's wondering what he looks like. So uh, there we go. So uh, JPEG, why don't you get yourself settled there? I know you're, you've got the shot all set up there. So, uh, yeah, that's right. Just wave, wave to your adoring audience there. That, that's good. Um, well, welcome to the microphone side. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. You got it. Now, this doing it with styles, what is that all about? How did it get started? Give us a little background on, on this. Okay, well, of course, my last name is Styles. Mm -hmm. No. John P.G. Styles. I thought it was JPEG. It is. <laughs> oh. And that comes from my initials, JPG. Plus, I'm a photographer and a videographer, so JPEG, blah, 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 blah. Oh, so that's how you got it. That's how I got it. <laughs> wow. So Can't stick anything by cash tonight, I'll tell you. I know. He's pretty sharp. He's sharp tonight, like a butter knife. Go so ahead. What started this was some years ago, some of you, I think Cash is old enough to remember, Fred Astaire. <laughs> sure. Sure. Okay. Fred Astaire once said, if you're going to do it, do, do it, it right, do it big, do it with styles. <laughs> and I said, wow, that's my tagline. There it is. So... Um, doing it with styles can be people, places, things. I made a quick list just so I could remember some of this stuff. <laughs> and I have a Facebook page called Doing It With Styles. And every few days I award, I give a Doing It With Styles award to some person, place, or thing. And I have in this envelope right here. The first ever on air wow. doing it with Styles Award that wow. I'm going to award tonight. Wow. Was that envelope hermetically sealed in a mayonnaise jar in the porch of Funko Wagnall? No, it was <laughs> it was going to be, but I didn't want to lick the envelopes. Oh, nobody <laughs> nobody licks envelopes anymore. So here are some examples of doing it with Styles. Go for it. Okay, random acts of kindness, making someone smile, being the best you can be, paying it forward. Trying to make a world a better place. Honor flight. Honoring our veterans. Laughing so hard, your sombrero falls off and you drop your taco. <laughs> <laughs> the Grand Canyon. Close encounters of the third kind. Music of any kind. Reading your favorite book over and over and over. Cosplay. Dancing like nobody's watching. Listening to Vegas Unwrapped. <laughs> there you go. Singing in your car at the top of your lungs to your favorite song. And a few people that I've got here that I would be remiss in mentioning. George Carlin, Robin Williams, James Cagney, Humphrey Bogart, Joan Rivers, Mae West, Marilyn Monroe, Da Vinci, Babe Ruth, Bobcat, and Lady Bobcat. <laughs> wow. And Give me the chills, man. Last but not least... Afternoon naps. Ah, Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, so right now, right here, first time ever, this is the official first time doing it with Styles Award. Any chance you got a drum roll? No, no, I got one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I've got one somewhere. Here it is. Rolls. Okay, got it. Bring me up. Come on. Come on. Awesome. Okay, I've given this a lot of thought. I've spent all week. A lot of things have happened. A lot of people have passed. But my decision is that the first ever Doing It With Styles Award goes to Vegas Unwrapped. Oh, jeez. Wow. <laughs> now, I'm going to explain why. Wow. I've known you guys for about a month now. I've been around out in the community seeing what you do, what your radio show is all about. And as far as I'm concerned, that's what it's about. You do wow. it with styles. Things like the honor flight, the seniors, everything that you do for this community is why I'm giving wow. you the first ever Doing It With Styles Award. Wow. I, got, I have goosebumps. I, I, have, mean. I have one for each one of you. Jeez. Ah, and... Uh, 
We are, dare I say we are honored. This one right here wow. is for the Bobcat. Wow. Beautiful. Because he is a part of this show. Absolutely. So I'm going to make it. sure that he gets it. And I want to thank you guys for the opportunity. Oh, this is going to go up on my wall of fame Absolutely. prominently. It's going to go in the office. Wow. I mean, look, you know, we, 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 we have a lot of fun on the show. And we know that one of the things that we tried to do early on is make the commitment to give back to the community because of our background in, in, in uh, community service through Kiwanis. And, uh, you know, it, it's we talked about this actually yesterday or whatever day we were here in the studio everybody seems to be like six degrees of separation and if it wasn't for our relationship with sandy and and mike right uh chef michael we would not have met you and we we and i know i speak for him we've said it to you and you know privately after shows we we are the honored ones to have you as part of our team as well oh thank because you because you you get what you we've get been trying it. to do for five and a half years and and, and believe me uh, yeah i know and and this is uh, and this is truly uh, you know an honor or it's really our first really kind of award that we've ever gotten for what we do other than just people saying they like what we do but you get it and and people like you and bobcat and the people that are helping us with their foundation of our show is what's going to help us move forward to continue doing what we do and bring those kind of things to the forefront and and i mean i'm i'm literally as much as we've been close and talking and everything else i had no idea that this was coming I, 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 I made sure that no I, <laughs> that i didn't give anybody any indication you didn't and i'm just i'm just touched and by it this segment will be posted on my doing it with styles facebook okay. page tomorrow uh but i want to thank you guys for bringing me in as part of this because wow. i i really feel like i'm giving back to the community as well through working with you guys so wow. Well, you know, it, it's incredible because when we start, you got to go back in history. When we started this five and a half years ago, I wanted to do a sports show with him. Mm -hmm. And he had just gone on a two-year sports show run. And he said, no, Rick, we're not going to actually, he didn't call me that at the time. He was, <laughs> should I show it? Go ahead. He was calling me. Can you get the camera on this? Uh, you bet. It's not that big of an unveiling. Well, <laughs> he was calling me Shrek. <laughs> Because it was, <laughs> Shrek was there. And so that was my name at the time. And there's another long story behind that, but not here. So he said, no, we've got to do a show about, well, what the hell do we know about? And what we knew about from our timeshare was Vegas. And we knew, we knew at the time that Vegas was more than gambling the strip and strip clubs and it was just the whole concept to unwrap all these things that is you you've coined the phrase over the years that people say i didn't know that and then as we started doing it and i think our very very first act into the community was uh was uh child uh, stop child trafficking stop child trafficking is the first time we as phillips and cash went out into the community to try to give something back and it was i guess it was from that point in time that we said let's make the mission statement of this show to give back to the community while informing the community that there is more to vegas than strip clubs and the strip and gambling and we feel finally after five years and th over 300 shows that we are definitely accomplishing this goal so to bring it fast forward to this so to get something like this from somebody who's only known us a month but has jumped into the fray as you would say and now is as totally committed to this movement which is what vegas unwrapped is it's a movement uh, uh, john I, I thank you so much it means a lot it does it means mean a lot. awful lot wow now, I have to clarify that the Facebook page is starts off with doing, no G, D-U-I-N, it with styles with an I in there. So when you look it up, and I've got it linked, uh, I'll put the link on our Facebook page, and I've been clicking some friends. I don't know if you noticed that your like count went up, because yeah. I've been I've been clicking our clicking my friends on there. So, uh, and you have and a friend? I, I, well... Aaron does. That other guy doesn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that other guy doesn't. Hey, yeah, I could I could attest to that. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. By the way, before we go to the top of the hour break, I do want to give one updated score uh, on on uh, behalf of our guest in studio, the president who has arrived. Oh yes, he um, has. Chase Headley hit a two run walk off home run in the bottom of the ninth to beat the Red Sox five four. That's beautiful. So <laughs> I figured you'd appreciate that. The two so, the two Yankee fans. That's right. I got my Yankee Jeter shirt on. Not enough to real i mean when we talked about this yeah. 
they may not make the playoffs, right. but what a season. They've put oh. together such a great Girardi, season. Girardi. Because mean. they've they've been... You should be manager of the year. Absolutely. I think so as well. And Absolutely. you know me, I was a Yankee mm-hmm. hater. Well, now I got the two of you in my ear. What am I supposed <laughs> to do? But I respect and always have respected the organization because they do whatever they have to do to put the product out on the field. Mm-hmm. Unlike that other team in New York that <laughs> breaks my heart just about every year. Yeah, the mutts, right? But I love them. My mutts. Well, that's all right. That's right. Nothing wrong with that. Um, all right. Uh, I again. can't wait for this. I can't wait for next week doing it with Styles. I'd love to see who's going. You know who who can top us, man. I know. Are you kidding me? I know it's gonna be tough. It's, it's, tough. it's gonna be it's tough. It's gonna be tough. All right. When you start at the top of the mountain, yeah. you know it's all it's down downhill from here. Yeah. It's all down. Here. That's what I said when I was up on Mount Johnson <laughs> this right. morning. <laughs> Did you have your skis with you earlier? I'll tell you why. How cold was it up? It, it was very about twenty I, degrees cool. I, I stepped out of the car and I go, whoa, whoa, what's this? <laughs> that's why our town goes up there during the summertime so yeah all right we're at the top of the hour hour number one is in the books and again john i mean you, you've really caught cash and i with this like Blue there's no way. tomorrow so once again thank you for for recognizing our our path um when we come back on the other side celebrity birthdays dates in history, dates in history. and then after that this the big s- announcement the you special got special announcement special announcement with, like, pre- with President with President Ted. Ted in the house. Just call him Prez. Prez. PT. Prez Ted. Prez Ted. <laughs> Sounds like the Pez candy. All right. We'll be back in Notify the other side. the networks. <laughs> What's that? What Notify the networks. <laughs> NBC has nothing on us. No All right. Chance. We'll be back on the other side right after this. All right. Welcome back to Vegas Unwrapped here on VegasAllNetRadio.com. If you're listening to us on the internet, that's great. If you got to go somewhere, take us on your phone. You can always listen to us on your downloadable podcasts. And um, technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Probably just the volume. That's all that you needed, Teddy. Mr. President, does that work? Can you hear now? Yeah, I'm good. All right. So joining us now in the middle is Mr. President Ted, all the way from New York. He'll be joining us officially in about 15 minutes, but Mr. Cash has invited him to participate with us in our dates in history and celebrity birthdays. I, I don't know if that's good or bad for you, sir. I think it'll work. You think it'll work? All right, we'll find it's, out it's, here. If the competition begins again. Oh, gosh. <laughs> all right. So let now, me... Because uh, normally I go against Bobcat. Right. And last week he beat me like a redheaded stepchild. He crushed you. Wow. And, and you know what? Because he looked and he cheated. Well, today, the very first thing I did was to try to get on the... And a, and a phone rang, and the rest Good. of the day, Serves you so right. I know nothing. <laughs> Serves you right. All right. All right, before we get started, though, with birthdays, uh, something I wanted to do with the opening of the show, which um, um, uh, I was remiss in not doing, and that is, of course, recognizing the great Joan Rivers passing away today. 81 years old. Uh, many of you probably know the fact that uh, last week she went into the hospital for a procedure and uh, unfortunately had, uh, I guess, car- on her throat, something right. that was supposed to be relatively minor, I Very think. Very minor. And and she ended up with having cardiac arrest on the table. They rushed her to Mount Sinai, where she was on life support for a number of days. They tried weaning her off of life support. That did not work, and apparently she succumbed uh, earlier today. So, a real um, shame, a real shame. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm actually on Facebook looking to see if there's something I can bring up, but there's so many tributes to her that would take more than just a minute or two for me to play. I would just encourage you to go onto YouTube, search Joan Rivers, wow, and, and you, you can <laughs> find interviews and 81 years worth of <laughs> of of, Comedy. Inter- of stuff. I mean, it's, she was really the first one to break the barrier in late night TV, especially in hosting. Absolutely, she was one of the first to replace Johnny Carson. She was the first, right? First woman, first sure. woman to replace Johnny when he was taking his vacations. And boy, was she funny! Oh, absolutely, and she, and she still is. Nothing, oh, nothing was. was. <laughs> yeah. Nothing would st- stop her. In other words, yeah. nothing that. There was nothing off limits. She went after everybody. You know, she was to a certain extent the Don Rickles of women's comedy. Right. Uh, no question. And you know, I loved her. I loved her. I Me thought too. she was great. Me too. 
I just saw the other night uh, some sort of a special uh, women comedians. Uh, I don't know. Well, I, she certainly was groundbreaking in a lot of different ways, and and certainly one of the really uh, the the first one of the first female stand-up comedians. I would say comedians, as they would emphasize differently than comedians uh, for the males. But uh, it's certainly, I mean, just you know, wonderful, powerful woman. She was mostly known as of late over the last what 15 years for doing all that red carpet stuff. Yeah, and, but you know what? Because of her, that became right. a famous thing to do. Absolutely. Prior to that, who who knew about? 20 years ago, did you know anything about a red carpet thing other than the Oscars? There was nothing nope. else. Yep. So she really, and her daughter, of course, uh, and I, I love the relationship with her daughter. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, was, it was kind of adversarial and yet very loving. Absolutely. Tremendous lady. So she will be missed by many. All right, here we go. If you're celebrating a birthday today, September 4th, you're celebrating a birthday with these people. <laughs> Can't do that. All right. You can bring that down. Bring it down. Bring it down. Good. All right. Here we go, guys. You ready? We're going to have President Ted versus Mr. Cash. Is that what we're doing tonight? Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Here we go. Good luck, guys. Singer Beyonce is turning how old? Do you guys know who Beyonce even is? Oh, okay. Just making sure. <laughs> just making sure. I'm not that dead. <laughs> She's like considered one of the number one rated performers in the world today. I, I'll say she's about 34. 34 for Mr. Cash. I was going to say 36. Well, you'd both be wrong because it's 33 is the correct Ooh. answer. Ooh. Actress, celebrity roasting comedian Whitney Cummings. She's got a new show coming up on NBC called Whitney. Whitney Cummings. Not too familiar with her, however... Knowing the way you play this game, I'll say she's 38. 38. I'm not that familiar with her either, but I think she's a little bit old. I'm going to say about 41. 32, however, would be the correct answer. Ooh. We're right. off doing pretty good, Ted. We're off to a flying start. Scoreboard's up. Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. He played Freddie Boom Boom Washington and Welcome Back Cotter. How old is he? Oh. Now you're jumping up in age. Yeah, I don't know why it's out of order, but... Yeah, he's got to be in the Travolta range. I'm going to say he's 61. I think he's about 57. He is... How old did you say? 61. 60, though, would be the correct oh. answer. <laughs> Cash, you're close. It doesn't help in this game. He never gives me credit for close. No. He shouldn't. Jason... <laughs> great. Just great! <laughs> Jason David Frank. He played Tommy on the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. He was the Green and White Ranger on the original and the Red Ranger for the Power Rangers Zeo. I know you guys followed the Power Rangers. Come on. Oh, my God. When did they come out? The 70s? The 90s? <laughs> I think the 80s. I'm not sure. So let's make them 40. 44. 41, though, would be the correct answer. <laughs> I'm missing everything by one. You're only off by one, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. Former Major League Baseball catcher, Mike Piazza. Ah, uh, Cash, this should be right down your alley. It really should. I'm embarrassed. You should be if you I'm, don't get it right. I'm embarrassed. He's your boy. If he gets it wrong, he gets a minus one. Okay? All right. 45. Now, 48. 46, however, would be the right answer. <laughs> Cash starts in the negative. <laughs> Three in a row, missing one. Comedian Damon Wayans is turning how old? All right, living color. Okay. I'll throw out a 44. I'll say 47. 54 would be the correct Whoa. answer. Whoa. Dr. Drew Pinsky is turning how old? That's 60. 6 0. 62. 56 would be the correct answer. You guys are aging these people for crying out loud. Uh, legendary golfer Tom Watson is turning how old? Wow. 64. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go way up there. I say he's 75. 65, however, would be the correct answer. Only off by one. <laughs> <laughs> Meryl Bubba Knight, one of Gladys Knight's pips, also her brother. How old is Bubba Knight? Bubba. Bubba. I know Bubba. 
Didn't, gonna... you, didn't you hang out with his brother in high school? <laughs> <laughs> Bubba Gladys, 66. A little older, 7 72 would be the correct answer. All right, guys, this is the last birthday one before we go to dates in history. Actress Mitzi Gaynor. She's still alive. Apparently. <laughs> wow. wow. Mitzi. 77. I don't think that's old enough, Cash. About 82. Oh, I would have loved you to have gotten it. 83 would be the right oh. answer. By virtue of Mr. Cash losing a point, going to negative one, <laughs> President Ted wins with a zero. <laughs> I get no respect. <laughs> and that does it for Celebrity Birthdays. Once again, happy birthday for everybody celebrating a birthday today from Vegas Unwrapped. Next up, dates in history. <laughs> All right, here we go. You ready? I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> what yeah, year did Los Angeles be founded, was founded by Spanish settlers? What year? You're the history buff, kid. I know, this, you should, he never does well with this. 1841. <laughs> 1822. How about 1781, guys? Wow. See, those Mexicans got in there earlier than I thought. <laughs> By the way, they were they Spaniards. Were tacos they, they were play. Spaniards. Well, Not, where do you think they came from? They were Spaniards. From Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> send your comments to Vegas Arab, our cash no, at gmail.com. No, 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 send them to Chef Michael <laughs> Yeah, He's the fault of all of this. What year did George Eastman receive a patent for his roll film camera and registered his trademark, Kodak? Oh. 1909. Maybe a little earlier, about 1903. 1888, however, it was a lot earlier. <laughs> so I guess the camera came before the phone. Yeah, I guess so. And it right? took 100 years to put them together, right? <laughs> Unbelievable. Thanks to ACN, right? Uh, what year did Ford Motor Company <laughs> begin, <laughs> begin selling the Edsel, the famous Edsel line oh, of cars? We, we what should year? know this. We certainly should. I'm, I, I, know, I, have, I'm not, I have think one? I have it. I'm not old enough to Did really you have know. one? No, but I know it. 1957. 58. 57 is the yeah. correct answer. Hey, got one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what year was singer Kelly Clarkson voted the first American Idol winner on the Fox TV series? Uh, 2002. 2001. How do you know about American Idol? I love her. <laughs> How do you know about American Idol? Did I used watch to watch it, it regularly. Well, he Not got it in 2002. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, know it's, I know it's on 12 years. <laughs> he, he nailed it. Unbelievable. Where dear crocodile hunter Steve Irwin, age 44, dive a stingray's bar pierced his chest. Ooh, that was that nasty. Was, was it was oh, that was so Think nasty. Think you got the point? Oh. Phil. Sorry. That's <laughs> uh, 2005. <laughs> no, earlier than that. Two, 2001. Had you gone with the first number that started coming out of your mouth in 2006, you would have gotten it right. Son of a gun. Toy maker Mattel recalled 800,000 lead tainted Chinese made toys worldwide, a third major recall in just over a month during that year. What year was that? Wow. That was a bad year for Mattel. Uh, 1999. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a clue, but I'm going to say much earlier, around 1970. 2007. Do you, wow. know, do you guys not notice which direction the year is yeah, going? Yeah, I'm getting it. It's okay. going up. It's, it's only been doing this it for five and a half years. This is my first time at this. I, I, no, I, I'm giving you a pass. He shouldn't, though. Uh, let's see. What year John McCain accepted the Republican presidential nomination as the party's convention in St. Paul, Minnesota? We both know that. I, I don't want to read the rest of the description. <laughs> <laughs> and then took Sarah Palin for a ride? <laughs> well, it was a little little worse than I'll that. I'll answer that. But you're right, Sarah Palin I'll, was I'll answer sentence. that for the both of us. 2008 it would be the correct answer. Okay. Last but not least, mercifully, Detroit Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick ple pleaded guilty to obstruction of justice in a sex scandal, forcing the Democrat out of office. What year was that? That was last Thursday. <laughs> 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 uh, that was after he, he talked to uh, Brady from Washington. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's say 2010. Uh, I think it was 11. 
2008 would be the correct okay. answer. Mercifully, that does it with dates in history. Thank goodness we are over with that. But you guys finished tied, although you guys get half a credit for sharing that one question. Yeah. So, All right, we come back on the other side. President Ted has a big announcement to make. He joins us all the way from New York. Came came in for a special announcement, so we'll be getting to that on the other side of the break. You're listening to Vegas Unwrapped here on Vegas All Net Radio. Phillips and Cash, we'll be right back. All righty, welcome back to Vegas Unwrapped. Aaron Phillips, Ricky Cash, big red filling in on the board for Bobcat. We hope he's feeling well tonight. And JPEG behind the camera. So, Mr. Cash, I believe you had a shout out you wanted to take care of. Yeah, you know. So you don't end up on the couch. You're telling me. You know, I left my computer home, and, and Cammy got really excited because. I left it home. I said, why? She says, because I can get the sound on yours and I can listen to the show tonight. So, Cammy, I hope you're still out here because here it comes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. All right, hold on. I gotta, I'm got. i queuing something up real fast here if I can. Here we go. All right, you have my pot up there? Cash, right. is that what you're going to say to Helena? <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very nice. Let's give Aaron Phillips a hand. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very little. <laughs> now joining us here in Vegas Unwrapped is the gentleman we're just going to simply call President Teddy. Or President Ted, because that sounds like Teddy Roosevelt. All the way from Dix Hill, Long Island, New York. Welcome there, President Ted. Thanks, Aaron. It's a real privilege to be here with you and the legendary Ricky Cash. Yeah, he's legendary, all right. So, Ted, I understand you have an announcement that you'd like to be to make, and it's a scoop, and it's the first to be heard right here on Vegas Unwrapped. That's true, Aaron, but uh, we'll have to hold off on that for a little bit. Just keep calling me President Ted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. President Ted, tell me, how long and how do you know Ricky? I know Ricky since high school, and he was a legend back then as well. Really? Absolutely. He had three varsity letters before his sophomore year. What were they, Alpha, Beta, Sigma? What did he letter in? That's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> Ping pong, wheelbarrow run, and Skipping? Skipping? Are you kidding? I never kid. He skipped more classes than anybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now that makes sense. That does make sense. Uh, do you know the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Oh, uh, loved it. Absolutely. Does it everybody? Absolutely. I would certainly hope so. The movie was uh, based upon Ricky Cash's life. Are you kidding? How so? Ricky Cash was the, uh, how can I put it, he was going out with the uh, head cheerleader and prom queen, and her name was Jill Farina. Farina, Farina. Sounds like something my mom used to eat in the morning for oatmeal or something. Yeah, we all did. Her father was Joe Farina, and he <laughs> became a billionaire. A, a billionaire? A, the first billionaire. <laughs> the first billionaire. Oh, my goodness. Listen, is there is there any more that comparisons to the movie that you can tell me was his life? In the movie, Ferris went to Wrigley Field. You're aware of that, uh, right? I do remember, yes. Okay. Ricky was at Yankee Stadium way back when the great splendid splinter Ted Williams was playing against the Yankees and the pitcher that day, as we should know being Yankee fans, right. was the great Whitey Ford coming off his Saw Young year. He was about to deliver his first fastball to the splinter and out of the dugout came Ricky running like Grease Lightning, picked off the pitch before it got to Yogi at the plate, and Ricky started heading for the outfield for the exit to take that ball home. So let me ask you, is this the first time he actually got arrested in his life? No, he was arrested twice before that. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't get arrested that day. What happened was the Mick, the great Mickey Mantle, the legend, yeah. 
Did he trip him he on his way by him? No, no. He he intercepted Cash. He intercepted Cash before he had a chance to get out of there. All right. And so by intercepting him, what did the great Mick do? The great Mick asked Ricky for his autograph. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough of this present, Ted, because I just, I'm just i not going to be able to get him in my car on the way home. All right, so let's get to the announcement. What is this big announcement you came all the way in from New York to deliver tonight? The big announcement is that it is my supreme pleasure, privilege, to announce that I am starting the Ricky Cash Fan Club. Amazing. Are you serious? I, How does it work? I am absolutely serious. Oh, my God. Jeez. The f- First, we're doing it with Styles, and now we got a fan club for you? Is that what you're the president of? The man deserves a fan club. He's my hero. Oh, my gosh. He's my hero. He let me be in his entourage all of his life. <laughs> <laughs> you mean his harem, don't you? Uh, that too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so how does this all work if, You know, in, in terms of the membership? Where can we get information? Uh, well, all you need to do is go to our website. Well, I should say your website. Oh, our website? Okay. Not how my, did that happen? Not my website. <laughs> I worked it out. Oh, I got you. You uh, must have paid off the webmaster really well. <laughs> I took care of that. <laughs> I took care of that. <laughs> she made the check? <laughs> no, she, cleared, yes. she's a female. I took <laughs> care of that. <laughs> I learned from cash the best. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, the website is www.vegasunwrapped.net. Anyway, there are three types of memberships. There is gold, there is platinum, and then, of course, there's diamond. And uh, all of the memberships get a personally signed 8x10 glossy of Ricky Cash, the hipster. No way. Way. Wow. Way. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Is there, is there more than just this picture that every membership gets? There's a lot more, but I really can't go into all of it right now. You can check it out once again on the website, www.vegasunwrapped.net. Wow. I, I'm, I'm just... Thank you, Mr. President Ted. I'm, I'm sure the response is going to be overwhelming as we, it has this announcement. We are. And uh, Cash, what do you think about all of this? I mean... Hold on. Your, okay. I'm, I'll let Cash speak. Oh. <laughs> I always let Cash speak. We expect this to go viral. Viral. In, in 72 hours. Hours. Okay. Wow. I mean, that, that's amazing. Viral or virus? Yeah, exactly. Could be both. <laughs> Could your, be both. Make sure your Norton antivirus is up to date. <laughs> well, I, I want to tell you, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I mean, twice tonight, I've been on it. First by doing, doing it with Styles, and now a Ricky Cash fan club from my oldest friend for well over 50 years. You're telling I, too much there, Kev. I'm not, <laughs> well, yeah, I know, because we aren't young. But, Mr. President Ted, this is amazing. How did you come up with this? It just came to me. I mean, you deserve it. You deserve it. Wow. So we can get all the information at VegasUnwrapped.net. Phillips will be putting all this out on Facebook. And I, I'm just so thrilled. I'm already putting it on our fan page right now on Facebook. Unbelievable. I'll, I'll join. I'll uh, there you go. I mean, we got our first. I would say we have. you would be the first member, right? Uh, I mean, what else do they get? Do you I think, am the first member. Can you spill just a little bit besides this 8x10 picture? I mean, do they get a membership, membership getting, card? Do they, they get a greeting card? What? They're getting a membership card, which I believe will have their, uh, their email mail address on it, uh, date of birth. Uh, we're also going to be supplying to the uh, to the Diamond membership. They're going to be getting some uh, free show tickets right here in town, which I suppose are uh, certainly workable for those of us that live uh, in and around the Vegas area. And for those that come to Vegas, they could get it, right? And for those that come to Vegas on a visit or, you know, specifically to come here to try to get, uh, you know, a shot at looking at uh, Mr. Cash himself. Oh, my goodness. So there's, there's even photo ops and everything? Uh, I yes. We'll we'll allow photo ops. Uh, yeah, and we're talking about a a cruise. Uh, merchandising, <laughs> merchandising. We're talking about a cruise in the spring, but we'll we'll hold up on that right. Cruise now. where on Lake Mead? 
<laughs> a dinner cruise. A dinner hey, cruise. you know this is this is overwhelming, Thanks. and 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 the picture, the hipster picture is going to be on the button. Is is it also going to be pens, on a T-shirt? Pens and a T-shirt oh and the T-shirt. Oh my goodness! And this is going worldwide, right? Uh, we expect this to be going worldwide. Absolutely. Oh, and it's and it's inexpensive, from what I understand. It's definitely inexpensive. I mean, it's what, uh, like ten bucks? Ten bucks for the uh, for the gold, uh, twenty for the platinum, and thirty for the diamond. Wow! Who you ask? Wow, that's an amazing value. The tickets themselves are probably worth a C note, if not more. It is. There is. Wow. Well, I, I just posted on our Ve- Vegas Unwrapped Internet Radio fan page the link to our website direct to the Ricky Cash Fan Club page where they can get all this membership information, what each level will offer, and what they get. I, I here's, don't my, here's my credit card. Let's boost that post. <laughs> 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 right, you you think I'm kidding? <laughs> Kirk, I don't know about that credit card. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the few that still works. Okay. <laughs> wow. All all right, well. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, President Ted, I have to say I'm shocked and amazed uh, at such an announcement to to honor my partner because, you know, he, he does deserve it. I mean, I give him a lot of ribbing here on the show, and, you know, I mean, he does deserve it because he is a little bit of a lackey, and, you know, he, he the women love him for some reason. I mean, you should see when they come into the studio what they do around Mr. Cash. So yeah, You don't know what went on with Jill Farina. I mean, like I said, her, fa- <laughs> her father was a billionaire. Right. She wanted Ricky to drop out of school. He was two years older than me. She didn't care. Wow. She was a senior when I was a sophomore. She was a senior so you when you were a sophomore. You she had wa- a cougar back then, huh? Right. She wanted you to... He w- <laughs> I hope the camera got that one. <laughs> she wanted to get married and actually come out to uh, come out to L.A. and just you know hang out in the sand. She was the only heir to her daddy's fortune, and you know, but but Cash played the field back then, so you know, most guys like myself, I mean, you know, would have gone for it, but not Cash. Not cash, huh? Not cash. He uh-huh. gave up on the Farina um, Empire. The Farina Empire. Wow. Yeah, he, he likes cold cereal, though. Yeah, <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> well, that's the problem with Jill. She was a little frigid, actually. Oh, okay. I wouldn't know that. Well. <laughs> now it certainly looked hot enough. <laughs> <laughs> now, the tide turned when we went to college. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Then the president, Ted, he was the one that uh, attracted all the uh, superstars. So he was like the JFK of the time. Oh, are you kidding me? He was more like the Travolta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is a great honor, Ted. And, and how long do you plan on staying here in Vegas and, and working this club? Indefinitely. Wow. Indefinitely. Where are you staying? I have a, a suite up at the top in the Bellagio. Gotcha. Good job. Good job. Well done. Well <laughs> done. Plays a play. That's enough. <laughs> We need to go to break. Do we? Yeah, I think so. Pull up, pull up this. Uh, because I'm, I'm, this has been such an overwhelming show. You, you need to catch your breath, don't you? I need to catch something. A lot of respect for you tonight, Cash. Catch a cold is what you're going to catch in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we come back on the other side. If that wasn't bad enough, we may go into weird news yet. <laughs> weird news. <laughs> Check out the Ricky Cash Fan Club on the VegasRap.net website. Go to Vegas and Rap Internet Radio's fan page, and you'll be able to see the link right there. That'll take you to somewhere. And, we're, and I guess these guys are serious about it. There's memberships up there, three different levels, and what each membership level will actually get you. And I believe you guys can pay direct with PayPal, right? Yeah, you can. There's a link that goes directly to PayPal, so you can use your credit card or if you have a, a PayPal account. And I will tell you that the mer- merchandise, right, will get to you within two to four weeks. There you go. Absolutely correct. Well, sounds good. All right, we come back on the other side. Some weird news. If, that, if that, that wasn't bad enough. enough. <laughs> right. Vegas and that will be right back all right welcome back to vegas unwrapped all right before we get into some weird news we couldn't get rid of president we, i know he got shackled well that's okay yeah he's, he's still he's here. here um Thanks, you know, guys. the mountain <laughs> the mountain vista little league baseball team really set Las Vegas on fire in terms of baseball. Right? Sure. I mean, would you agree to that? Oh, With the Little League World first, Series, first Nevada team to ever get there. Well, here's the cool part: is that our Las Vegas 51s, which for those of you um, um, who are not aware of it, is the AAA affiliate of the New York Mets. Geographically, I don't understand how that works, yeah. but it was the last place that they could find. I it. guess. Find a, I guess yeah. uh, must have been a weatherman who doesn't know maps. Must have 
structured that one. They could beat the Mets. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. As as we know, they won their their division uh, in the Pacific Coast League. That uh, the Southern th- Division by nine games. There you go. Uh, so they had a good year. This is the second year in a row they made the playoffs. First time in the history of the franchise back they won, they, and that they won eighty games. Uh, Wally Backman, uh, former major league player for the Mets, uh, of course, is the the head coach. They won last night. Was it five one or something last night? Five four. Five four. Yep. Well, tonight they're down to the Reno. Aces six nothing going into the Ooh. bottom of the six. So, but they they are they are a late scoring team. We've seen it. We've gone to enough games this year to know that can happen. And if they lose the game, then then they're in a little trouble because they have to go back to Reno for the next two. But they had the best road record as well in the Pacific Coast League. So we're real happy that the fifty ones are doing well. So they had the mountain the Mountain Ridge kids there last night. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. Falling out the first. Oh, ball. it was tremendous. Well, you know why they're not doing well tonight, don't you? We're not there. It's dollar beer night. Oh, my. They never <laughs> do well on dollar Thursday's beer Thursday's dollar beer night's the night. I, bet you I, bet, I would venture to guess that there are more people at tonight's game than there was last oh, night. Oh, I'm sure. Because we know. We, we go to enough games during the year where it's dollar beer night or dollar dog nights on Mondays that they get pretty decent crowds. No, that, absolutely. But uh, what is it, a best of five in this This level? first one's a best of five. Best and, of five. They, and eventually, the winner of the Pacific Coast League right. plays the winner of the Inter- International League for right. the for the minor league World Series. Well, that's that's a uh, that would be nice if the fifty ones can get there. That would be real good. Of course, how many guys off the fifty ones roster got pulled up to the oh, to the Mets? Not too many this time, but they've been coming up all year long. Right, but in now, fact, right now they're at twelve players on the Mets twenty five team roster that are that were fifty ones this year. Yeah, but I'm talking now during the forty man roster. They only brought expansion. up a, they only brought up a couple, couple just two. All right, well, that's good. So that means most of the 51s are still intact for all intents and purposes. Very much so. Good. Including the top prospect, the pitcher, Noah Syndergaard, who I believe pitched the little last night. All right. Sounds Sounds good. Don't they have a great shortstop, too? Oh, Matt Reynolds. Watch out for him. He might be up in the bigs next year. I heard talk yesterday on the radio that uh, the Mets are souring on Daniel Murphy a little bit. I don't understand why, because I don't really believe it. I mean, here's a guy that's their top hitter for the last three or four years. He's coming into his last year of August. Arbitration, mm-hmm. and you know, it's the guy was before he got hurt. He was leading the league in hits, you know, and he's been the most consistent hitter, almost a three hundred hitter. Yeah. And well, we'll see what happens. See what happens. Absolutely. I, I, yeah, I'd be very disappointed if they traded him this year. Uh, with about twenty seconds left in the game tonight, Seattle thirty six, Green Bay sixteen. So much for the under bet. Yeah. So oh, uh, 52 yeah, fifty two. So Major League Baseball scores: Seattle over Milwaukee three to two, or bottom of the ninth. Seattle up three to two. Arizona Arizona 5-0 over the Padres. The Angels beat Minnesota 5-4. Seattle 10-2 over Texas. Toronto uh, beat Tampa Bay 1-0. Baltimore beat Cincinnati 9-7. Detroit beat Cleveland 11-4. And as I mentioned earlier, the Yankees with a two-run walk-off home run by Chase Headley defeated the Red Sox 5-4. That's a big disappointment. Not the game itself, but the the quality of the play of the Red Sox this year. After winning the World Series last year, and now they're going to... What they are going to finish in the basement probably right? wow. they 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 are there now so wow um, yeah absolutely getting rid of Ellsbury hurting him a lot yeah, he's pretty much putting up the same production that he did with the with the Red Sox last year for the Yankees. Now, now Girardi's got him in the leadoff spot, and I guess moving Gardner down to the three hole for now, and we'll see. You know yeah. what this sounds a little like to me? It sounds like raw power sports. I, I know, that's what happens when you start talking baseball. All right, with that, it's time for some weird news. What do you think? We'll stretch weird. News. Sounds like a plan. All right, here we go. Just when you think it's safe to go back in the water. Weird news lets us know that we're actually a lot better off than we really think we are. (laughs) Got some good stories for us? Yeah, I think we got a couple. I'm going to start with the police report. You know how much we love police reports. Is it the North Las Vegas police? No, I don't think so. This is Brooklyn. Then I'm safe. Then I'm safe. Arrest him at your peril. In July... Where is this from? In Brooklyn, New York. No way. A jury in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. That's why I started with this one. Wow. Awarded Kevin Jarman, age 50... $510,000 $510,000 from the city for the broken ankle he suffered during his arrest for shoplifting in May of 2011. A charge, by the way, in which he did plead guilty. Among his other New York City income, you ready? 
$20,000 settlement for false arrest on a drug charge in 2013 and another for $15,000 in 2005. And who says crime does not pay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. Exactly. Well, that's, that's Brooklyn. That's amazing. That's 500, almost $550,000 since 2005 wow. that he's gotten from the city. And he pleaded guilty. I'd love to know more about that story. Jeez. Under the topic amazing. of immature, Princeton University professor John Mulvey, age 67, who, by the way, teaches financial engineering applications, was charged in July with stealing 21 yard signs around the town of Princeton. Signs for a computer repair business owned by a man with whom he was feuding. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Your revenge is a dish best served cold. Absolutely. Ice cold. Nathan McCoy, age 21, sought by police near Boise, Idaho in July on a probation violation, took off running, forcing officers to chase him onto the Eagles Hills golf course. McCoy sought refuge in a pond, standing waist deep as deputies tried to coax him out. But even with the pond, even with the pond surrounded, it took McCoy half an hour of standing there to conclude that he didn't have a plan B. Wow. <laughs> I wonder if it was winter. I, oh, gosh, I don't know. That would be pretty cold up in Boise. Yeah, oh, here's a story that I have to let somebody know about. Walker, this is under a category called the boy who wasn't bullied enough to, in school. Oh, my goodness gracious. Walker Hardenden, age 19, a sophomore at the University of North Carolina School of the Arts. Oh, we know somebody else. We certainly do. Was recognized in April for a Guinness Book record of the highest note ever whistled, which is a B7. I guess that's a a note level B7, I guess. Harden, who took the Raleigh News and Obser- told the Raleigh News and Observer that he was that he has irritated his parents and friends for years, admits that the, that he whistles all the time, up to four or five hours a day. I bet you the sound doctor must have pinched oh, him. something. Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> that's your daughter, you know. Uh, I know that's my daughter. Thank you very little. I appreciate that. Right. Least competent criminals. One no, of our favorite topics. Always one of the best. Questionable decisions, Mr. Cash and President. Ted, Ryan Mullins, age 22, was arrested in Swansboro, North Carolina. Wow, what a surprise! In August, when he came to an officer's when it came to an officer's attention at 5:30 a.m., police said he had broken into a pharmacy, had stolen the 100-pound safe, and was dragging it behind his car when the officer routinely pulled in front of him. Nonetheless, Mullins decided to try and pass the officer. No way. <laughs> with, the, with the safe. With the safe. I guess he's never heard of an anchor before. I don't know. By the way, is Swansboro near Murfsboro? Uh, it could be. I don't know. It, it very well could be. Robert Hart Jr., age 42, was captured after a high-speed chase through Burlington, Massachusetts this past August, with police recovering stacks of stolen credit cards and suspected stolen high-end electronics from the car. Hart had attracted police attention by parking his car with a mismatched license plate unattended with his engine running and parked in a handicapped parking spot. Yeah. And that was in Burlington? That was in Swans. Oh, that was in Burlington, Massachusetts. That's not far from where the, sw- the sound doctor was this summer. No, what was she doing? She's following these <laughs> criminals around. What I did guess. you raise out I there? I tell you what, I don't know. It must be the water, I guess. I don't know. All right, here we go. News of the this is a classic. She's gonna kidnap Mickey next. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is a classic news of the weird article dating back to May of 2010. Britain Robert D feeling humi- humiliated at being called the world's worst tennis pro by London's Daily Telegram, and of course other news organizations, sued the newspaper for libel in 2009. After taking testimony in February 2010, the judge dismissed the lawsuit, convinced by Dee's having lost 54 consecutive international tour matches. By the way, all of them in straight sets, by the way. Fearful of an opposite result, 30 other news organizations had prematurely apologized to Dee for disparaging him. But the Telegraph had stood its ground and was, of course, humble in victory, titling its story the outcome World's worst tennis player loses again. Oh, I like that. <laughs> nice. No rest for the weary there. Here you go. Wow. Do I really want to touch the story that has ISIS in it? No, no. I'm going to let it go. No. Compelling explanations. Thomas Clark, age 28, of Crowley, England, B, 
defeat one of the society's most foreboding charges in July when he was acquitted of voyeurism. I love voyeurism. Even after admitting that he had a hidden that he had hidden that video camera in a workplace restroom. And even despite evidence that he formerly worked in the pornography industry. <laughs> Clark persuaded a Horsham magistrate's court judge that he suffered an extreme phobia of diarrhea and vomit. And that, by hiding the camera, he was thinking only of ascertaining that the restroom was clean before he entered. Oh, that is so cool. Can't make this stuff up, you folks. Can't. Cash, wasn't voyeurism your first arrest? Hey, Ted. I thought he Sorry. studied that in college. Sorry. Ted. In America, we're all great yeah. parents, aren't we, Mr. Cash? We President just, Ted. Of course. Kayla McKenzie, age 22, was charged with DUI in Bismarck, North Dakota. No way. Yeah, a condition that led her to crash into five separate vehicles or structures in one day on August 12th, while according to police, three unsecured children were in her car, including a year old infant riding in her lap. Nonetheless, said the .252 blood alcohol driver, I look like a bad mother, but I'm not. I'm actually a really good mom. Yeah. Oh okay. My God. Rayvon Campos, 22, pleaded guilty in San Antonio in August to first-degree felony assault of his one-month-old daughter that resulted in brain hemorrhaging. Oh, my God. Nonetheless, he reassured the judge, this is the first time I've ever been in trouble. I'm a real good dude. Yeah, wonderful. I'd like to string him up by his grenades. <laughs> Suspicions confirmed. No way. Yeah. Fire hydrant at 393 University Avenue has brought in more parking ticket revenue since 2008 than any other hydrant in Toronto. $289,629 on 2,962 violations, according to an August Toronto Star report. Let me guess. It's in front of a strip club. While hydrants are usually located at curbside to facilitate fire engine access, the one at 393 University Ave was placed about 20 feet from the curb in the middle of a sidewalk and it was obscured by a tree and a planter about 8 feet long. <laughs> Nonetheless, the law's wording treats the hydrant for illegal parking and revenue earning purposes as if it were curbside. Very special. And last it's but not probably least... still was in front of a strip club. <laughs> last but not least, a woman hiking in Down Valley Park near Placerville, Colorado, told Denver's KUSA TV in August of her narrow escape from a mountain lion that had stalked her for half an hour, crouching menacingly each time she attempted to retreat. Stalking at the closest point, recalled Kyra Kepistonsky. It was about eight feet away. No way. At that point, she told the reporter, I don't know why, but I started singing opera really loud. The mountain lion sort of put its ears down and backed away. Only then was she able to call a friend who alerted rescuers. Wow. And that does it for this week's edition of Weird News, mercifully. Good, good thing. Some interesting stories this week, would you not say, Mr. Yeah, Cash? and you know what? Not loaded with the usual sex that we cover in this no, segment. No, I, I tell you what, I was trying to keep things rather in order this week. <laughs> well, we have Dignitary here. Well, president know, the, Ted, the, the you know what, I've got to watch what we do. He's the press. You know, so anyway, uh, we're about three minutes out. About two minutes, you can play The Odd Couple. All right. Or maybe not. Or maybe <laughs> not. No, but you can bring that up so that that's my final warning. So, Mr. Cash, any final thoughts on your um, fan club? Well, I, I, it's an honor. It's truly an honor. Uh, I will try to live up to the expectations of President Ted. That shouldn't take much. And I, <laughs> and I, and I hope that I hope that many many people out there take advantage of this wonderful opportunity. It could be life changing to walk around in a Ricky Cash T-shirt. Did I say there was a button also? Yeah, there's a button. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, you did there, President Ted. <laughs> hey, if this goes pretty good, we got a whole merchandising stuff coming up in six months. Cups, sauces. <laughs> Want to thank Brian McGill and Belinda Morris from Honor Flight of Southern Nevada, who provide some dignity to tonight's show. Banners, <laughs> flags. Want to thank you, the listener, for putting up with two hours of this and the last 45 minutes of Ricky Cash's fan club announcement. Stars and stripes with Ricky's picture on the banner. <laughs> Want to thank President Ted for coming in and sharing his most wonderful announcement with us. I'm taking it back to the plane tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Want to thank JPEG behind the camera. Want to thank Big Red for filling in for Bobcat tonight. Good job tonight there, Mr. Randy. And also listen to Randy's show, The Chill Zone, Saturday nights. Is that correct? 7 to 10? 7 to 10. 
7 to 10 p.m. here on Vegas All Net Radio, so give a listen to Mr. Randy. Got some good, good sounds. Yes, absolutely. We want to thank you, the listener, for always checking in with what we've got to do. The YouTube video and podcast will be up within the next 24 to 36 hours, and we appreciate you checking things out. We'll see you Saturday. Mr. Cash, be kind to each other, sir. Why is that? We're all we have. Thank God that's all we got. <laughs> have a great week. We'll see you Saturday at Red Rock, Harley-Davidson.